Good morning. Welcome to another worship service here at Bear Creek United Methodist Church. We're so excited that you are here today. It's Communion Sunday. Communion is always special. I wouldn't mind having communion every Sunday. What it does is it puts us in communion with one another, with Jesus Christ, and of course with those that have gone on and are now in the church triumphant. I want you to think about that today. Throughout this service, imagine those individuals that have gone before you. Imagine them being in this worship service with us. Imagine us fellowshipping and knowing that one day we're all, we're all going to be together, worshiping, loving our God, and really giving thanks to what God has done for us. Will you please stand and let's give God our all today. Good morning, Bear Creek. Uh, please join me in our call to worship this morning. We come together to celebrate good news of Jesus' Jesus's transforma transformative power. We rejoice in his miraculous works. Jesus can do spectacular things with whatever we offer him. We bring ourselves to Jesus with faith and gratitude. Let us come together and worship, knowing that Jesus satisfies every need. May we worship the Lord with open hearts and surrendered offerings. Amen. Good morning. Our opening hymn is number 467, Trust and Obey. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 3. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay for the favor he shows. For the joy he bestows, or for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate it. And Bob and Marva, all of you that are here today, I appreciate you so very much uh, for worshiping with us. If this is your first time, my name is Pastor Leo Tyler, and this is Bear Creek United Methodist Church. This is a safe, inclusive faith community that's seeking and growing in Christ's love. We love sharing that love as we connect individuals to love God and, and just serve, serve. And I think it all begins with uh, that love, how we show that love. The way we extend that love is by nurturing not only our spiritual development, but each other. I pray that you have been nurturing uh, that relationship with God all week long, and of course, with each other as we worship together. Please register your attendance. Let us know that you are here. Let us know if there's anything you ever need. You can always uh, text us uh, at 
832-773-4901. If you want to email, you can do that as well. Stay connected at bearcreekumc.org. Want to make sure that we stay connected all week long. Want to say a big thank you to all of you that participated yesterday uh, in the uh, worship service. It was a it was a homegoing service for Connie, and uh, this place was. Uh, pretty full. Uh, and I, I want to say thank you for your support, all you that helped with the reception as well. It's just a wonderful thing as we come together and let each other know how much we, we love. Also, thank you for all of your support with the backpacks. Next Sunday, put it on your calendar. It's always a different uh, here. We're going to have one service next Sunday. We want to do two things there. We want to make sure it's going to be VBS day, okay? So we want to celebrate with all of those that have been coming to VBS. We want to make a, a great, great celebration. Uh, all the kids have been doing a, a great job as far as coming and participating and all the volunteers. And so at 10 o'clock next Sunday, we'll all meet in here and then we'll have some fellowship after as well. Uh, I think they were all dressing up. Briggs, you're going to come show me uh, your uh, outfit. Everybody, uh, the, um, the kids were dressing up as their their favorite person this is their favorite grown-up and i want you to see how briggs uh briggs just made my day come on up here briggs if i was going to take off today and rem run didn't show up you guys would still have a stand over right you can stand right there if you want yeah that's good look at this guy can you I mean, he made my day. Thank you so very much. You gonna give me a hug? Oh, man. Ugh. I'm not going to let him do anything else except just show, because I don't know what kind of message he has for us today, but I'm going to let him save it for later, okay? Thank you. Give Briggs a hand, guys. So please come and celebrate with our kids on next Sunday, 10 o'clock. It's going to be a great time. And dress down, dress down, okay? I'm not sure I'm going to show my legs, but I'll make sure I dress down, okay? So looking forward to a, a great time. Hey, I, I want, uh, where's Amber? I know uh, Amber, come here, Amber. Uh, Amber uh, has been, she has been our librarian for 20 years. She started this li library that we have in 2003, only had about 3,000 books to start with. Amber ended up, come on, oh, come on, Jerry, wouldn't be the same if Jerry, because she didn't do it by herself. So come on close here. You come close. You want to get on the other side here, Jerry? Or you want to stand by? You stand by like you always have, okay? So these guys here have been working this library for 20 years. Started off with only about 3,000 books, worked through that library about 16 volumes after kind of cleaning it through and, and, and you know, you, you move and move new stuff in. There are 12,000 volumes in our library today. I think about how whenever you started uh, checking out books, you had to sign your name, you know? Now they have barcodes that all you have to do is just scan it now. And I don't know, these guys are brilliant. I tell you, they, they really work hard to make all of this happen. Well, I want to, yes? A whole it's, it's a whole committee? Yeah. So, everybody that's on that library committee, if you're here today, will you stand? Please. <laughs> Come on, give them all a hand. There you go. Appreciate you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, the, the kids even have, or they have a mobile uh, a book um, cart that whenever they, they can check out books as they're leaving the preschool as well. Lots of programs, the reading program, summer reading program, and I just want to say a big thank you for all uh, that Amber and Jerry has done for our church, what you guys have done, it's made a difference. And I think I want to say this too. I got to say that it's, um, I think Amber would have continued to do this, except for Melinda showing up one day. Melinda, will you stand please? This is Melinda Zickler. She, she's part of the library committee as well. 
and, and she has agreed to, um, to take over where Amber has let, uh, left off. So can you thank God for Melinda coming as well? Amber, we have come together. I think we want you to see something here. Uh, do you have it ready to go? Look this way, Amber. Nineteen eighty eight. I'm okay, that's when it started. Gotcha. Thank you, guys. I'm cry. It's okay to cry. God has blessed me to be here. All I think about is, come on, Amber, one more thing. Just, just give us one thing. I know, no, Amber, before you run off here, because you, you heard what she was. I heard what she was saying. But what would you want to say? Well, first of all, I want to thank all the people, the team that have made all these projects in the library possible. I guess my first thanks should go to my husband, because without this, I could not have done this Jerry, job. everybody. <laughs> I've already faced a computer problem this morning, so that's I, okay, I know where Jenny. I'm taking him. <laughs> yeah, that's good. But thank you all so much for your support of the library. Over the years, you've seen us do money makers and everything. And you've always been there to help us, even when we had special projects. Thank you again, and thank you for this. You're welcome. So That's her tear right there. That That's is. okay. Uh, stay standing, if you don't mind, as you give Amber another uh, uh, thank you there. We appreciate you so very much. We have a reception for you as well. We're going to be um, just, I mean, it was, I'm telling you, everybody wanted to do something for you here. So we want to just say a big thank you. And so after church, we get to all celebrate as well. Anybody else thinking about retiring? Don't. <laughs> Appreciate you very, very much. <laughs> She's not gone. She's going to continue to work with the library. Look around. See who you haven't seen in a while. And this is our time to just hug up on some folks. If you don't hug, give them a stiff arm, but let them know who you are, okay? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm gonna ask Pastor Ron to come and he's gonna lead us in prayer. You may be seated where you are. Thank you so very much. Pastor, you want me to take that? It's prayer time, Bear Creek. 
And as Pastor Leo mentioned earlier, uh, we celebrated the life of Connie Nelson yesterday. Uh, beautiful, beautiful service. And as we come together today, let us always remember that um, there are those among us who are grieving. There are those among us who are hurting. Uh, there are those among us who are recovering from surgeries or uh, treatments or all kinds of things. And then there are those among us who are celebrating outstanding, exciting news and just great praises. So as we come together always, let us remember that in this place is a place of praise is a place of comfort. It is a place where we can all gather together to worship our Lord. So let us pray together. Oh, gracious and loving God, thank you for this place, for the opportunity that we have to walk through these doors and be in your presence, for the opportunity that we have to live in this community. Be your hands, be your feet, be your witness to those among us. Thank you, Lord, that we have the ability to let people know that in this place they can come and feel comfort. They can come and feel relief. They can come and feel like they belong. So be with each and every one of us, Lord, this day. Look into our hearts. Hear our prayers. Hear our praises. And know that we love you and we thank you. And now, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Amen. Lupi is going to come as we prepare our hearts to give today. I think of a just a grateful heart, grateful heart. I'll tell you over and over again how Lupi taught me how uh, to open my heart up even more so. I've never seen anybody with such a big heart. Think about as you think about the, all the blessings that God has given you and how you're able to really give because of what God has given to you. What are you grateful for today? Are you grateful uh, that you can give, that you have a generous heart, that you have this, uh, this abundance of what God has given you, that you can give of what you have and still realize that you have so much more? <laughs> I think that's what gets me. Uh, I was raised in a poor family. It, it, didn't, it didn't always look like that. I thought my dad, my dad thought like that. He would give and give and give, and I didn't understand why he would do that because he had to take care of all of these children, you know, and yet he just kept giving. And what I realized is that it is true. We used to sing the song in our church, the more you give, the more you receive. And then they would sing this song and say, you can't beat God giving. You can't beat God giving because just again, the more you give, it seems like God just keeps pouring upon you. We don't give because of that. We just know that's the way it happens. So I pray today that even when you struggle sometimes to give, and we all do, we, we get to that scarcity mentality sometime and we think that, oh my God, there's no way I can spare anything. And yet we realize that God is the source and God has everything that we need. So as you give today, pray that God gives you a grateful heart. Let us pray. Our generous God that we pray to, that we are able to become more and more like you, generous in your love so that we can be generous in our love to you and to others, generous in that grace that you give, the forgiveness that you give so that we can also be generous in that grace and that forgiveness, generous in that caring, knowing how much you care for us so that we could be generous in our caring for one another, generous in giving us 
even of the things that we can enjoy, have fun, and bless others with. Help us to be generous in that fun and in the things that we can bless others with as well. As we give today, God, let this gift be multiplied in your kingdom so that others can be touched and experience this love that we experience, this relationship that we experience with you. We praise you for it in your son Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Remember, the Lord loves a grateful heart, a cheerful heart. So will you smile as you give today? Thank you. Is rising up a song here in the comfort of the faithful one. I walk a narrow road through valleys deep in search of higher ground on mountain steep. And though my feet unsure, I still keep pressing on, for I am guided by the faithful one. Faithful, faithful to the end, my true and precious friend, you have been faithful. I touch your side with thorns upon your brow you bled and died but there's an empty tomb a love for all who come and give their hearts to you the faithful one faithful to the end, my true and precious friend, you have been faithful, faithful, so faithful to God's only son and I will lift my hands my in praise for all you've done and I will worship you my faithful one Please stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source. 
us of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power lives. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please remain standing as we as I read the uh, Gospel of Matthew today, it'll be chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. I think this is a story that many of you are very familiar with. When Jesus heard about John, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. When the crowds learned this, they followed him on foot from the cities. When Jesus arrived and saw a large crowd, he had compassion for them and healed those who were sick. That evening, his disciples came and said to him, this is an isolated place and it's getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, there's no need to send them away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here except five loaves of bread and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. He ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves of bread and the two fish, looked up to heaven, blessed them and broke the loaves apart and gave them to his disciples. Then the disciples gave them to the crowd. Everyone ate until they were full and they filled 12 baskets with the leftovers. About 5,000 men plus women and children had eaten. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you so very much, Bob. Appreciate you. Uh, thank you, Haley and Zach, for that beautiful song. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Janet. Always good to have Janet with us. Uh, and she, she signed so well. I appreciate it so very much. The good news in this passage is that Jesus can make something spectacular happen with whatever you bring him no matter what it is. The title of this sermon is, What Do We Have to Give? What do we have to give? We saw what God did with Amber, with her gift. She brought it, and God made something spectacular happen. Before we get to what we have, let's take a look at Jesus' actions throughout this story. First, I notice the focus on Matthew. Matthew puts the focus on Jesus' response to the death of John the Baptist. Matthew writes, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place. As Bob was saying, a familiar story. You can find this particular story in every one of the four Gospels. You find it here in Matthew uh, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. In Mark chapter 6, verses 32 through 44. You'll find it in Luke chapter 9, verse 10b through 17. And finally, you'll even find it in John, John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. But Matthew is the only one, the only gospel writer that describes Jesus as withdrawing as a response to John's death. You see, the compassion that Jesus had toward John was not just towards John, but also toward this crowd that ends up gathering. In this remote place, it says that his compassion was expressed by healing, healing those that were sick. The next thing I noticed about Jesus was his response to the disciples. If you notice here, in verse 15, his disciples told Jesus, this is a remote place, it's getting really late, send the crowds away, they said, so that they can go into the villages and they can buy themselves some food. Jesus told his disciples, they don't need to go back to the villages in order to get supper, give them something to eat. Wow, that's a big order. Can you imagine being one of those disciples? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John report that there were at least 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children. 
And yet Jesus said, don't send them away. I can hear his disciples trying to figure this thing out. How in the world are we going to feed 5,000 people plus? In Mark's gospel, they said to Jesus, quote, that would take more than a half year's wages. Half year's wages. In John's gospel, Philip answered, 200 denira. 200 denira. That would be 200 days wages worth of bread. And he says, it is not enough for each one to receive even a little. Imagine taking your salary, dividing it in half. Are you calculating that? No, I mean, I mean, think about your salary, divide it in half. I would say, um, if I was getting the offering right now, uh, divide it by 10. But divide it in half, the disciples ask, are we to go and spend that much and give it to them to eat? Imagine half of your salary going to feeding these individuals. So what are you thinking right now? What are you thinking? How will Jesus get out of this one, right? Well, John wrote this. He already, Jesus already had in mind what he was going to do. I love that about Jesus. Jesus already has in mind what he is going to do when you offer your gift to him. Jesus already knows. I know you're thinking, what in the world he's going to do with what I have? Jesus already has in mind what he will do with what you give him. He's just waiting on us to do what? To give it. Give it. The disciples told Jesus, listen, and I, I bet this might be your comment. The disciples told Jesus, we have nothing here except. <laughs> we have nothing here except. I'm wondering what is the accept that you have to give Jesus. There was a little boy that had five loaves of bread and two fish. That was his accept. We have nothing except this little boy's lunch. Five loaves, two fish. What did Jesus say with that accept? Bring it to me. Bring it to me. Are you willing to give Jesus your nothing except? What follows that for you? What follows that? I have nothing, Pastor, except. Did you hear something come from your heart? I have nothing, Pastor, except. Because this is what Jesus does when you give him your nothing except. The first thing he does, he receives it. He doesn't argue with you. He doesn't judge it. He receives whatever your nothing except is. The second thing, notice what he does. He looks up to heaven. I love what he does. He connects it with his father. He connects it with heaven. He connects it with the future. He connects it with eternity. Because what you don't know about your nothing except is that it will affect people for eternity. Third, he blessed it. He blessed it. It's not when we bless something, but it, when, when, when Jesus blesses your gift, when Jesus puts his hand on your gift, it's not like any other person blessing what you give him. And I love this. He divided you nothing except. What he did is he made it possible that what you gave will not only be good for you, but it will be good for everybody. So remember that about your nothing except. It's not just for you. God didn't give you it just for you. There's a lot of individuals that will be blessed by what you have. And I love this. The last thing is, he gave the nothing except to be given to others. 
The scripture says they ate, they all ate, and they were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. So don't think that you're going to run out. You will be able to do all that God has called you to do. I preached on yesterday for Connie's funeral that she poured herself and I encourage everybody to take what God has given you, give to God, God will give it back to you, bless, and then it's, it's our opportunity to pour that. Pour it until there's nothing left. It doesn't matter what crowd it is. It doesn't matter if it's just your family. It doesn't matter if it's your neighborhood. It doesn't matter if it's the entire church body. It doesn't matter if God ends up wanting to use you to touch the whole world. It doesn't matter doesn't matter what those needs are whatever the needs are God already knows what your gift is supposed to do for those needs it doesn't even matter what you give God Jesus can do more Jesus can do more with your nothing except than you think he can you have to give it or maybe you think you're on that other side Maybe you're on that side of the crowd. Maybe you're the hungry one. <laughs> Maybe you need someone to give so that you can receive. Maybe you're the person who's overwhelmed by a need. Maybe you're the one that has come to the end of your resources. Maybe you're the one that's facing something that's beyond your ability. Maybe you're that person that don't have the strength, don't have the patience, maybe don't even have the money or the ability, and you're hoping, you're hoping to hear the words, don't send them away. Rather, don't send you away. It happens every Sunday, right? Imagine yourself. You come in, you find your pew, you sit, and you realize that you have this deep need. This deep need, what it is to draw closer to God or whatever it is, you have this deep need and you want to really have that need met. You show up, but your heart's despondent. And you're stuck. And you've been stuck for days. Maybe for weeks or months, you've been stuck. And God knows. God knows exactly where you are. But I love the scripture. Jesus already had in mind what he was going to do. <laughs> Jesus already had in mind what he was going to do. So when God's grace was poured upon this young man whose family did not attend church regularly, until one day his family ran into a friend at Walmart. They invited the family to church, which ended up being a huge awakening and learning experience for this young man. He was only about 12 years old, and he told me, quote, as a young kid, I initially did not understand the concept of giving our gifts to God. But singing, singing actually helped me learn what that means. Imagine him giving his nothing except singing to God. He says, quote, I feel the closest to the spirit, to spirit God when I am singing. And now God satisfies Bear Creek United Methodist Church here with a nothing except singing that Zach brought to Jesus. And Jesus gave it back, there he is, to Zach. And now, let me see you, Zach. And now Jesus is doing something spectacular with Zach's nothing but singing. Do you agree? Give me a hug. <laughs> <Mike too. laughs> Thank you.
Thank you for letting me use your story. You know, I thank God for giving Zach nothing except singing. <laughs> nothing except singing blesses my heart every Sunday. It comes with me during the week. And I think about how God uses him to bless. And I wanted him to know, he, oh, he's getting ready again. I want him to know that that's not even counting the leftovers, guys. Imagine what God does with his leftovers. His leftovers is whenever you go out and say, oh my God, did you hear Zach this morning? The leftovers are whenever you share with somebody and say, whoo, oh, did you feel what I felt? What's standing in the way? of your nothing except. You'd be surprised what God will do. Not just with your gift, but even with your leftovers. So the question is, what is your nothing except? What is it? What is your nothing except? Because God needs it. <laughs> We need it. Remember, the good news is this. Jesus can make something spectacular happen with whatever you bring him. So bring what you have. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so very much. Thank you for a congregation full of nothing except... Please bring those things to the surface and speak. Help us hear and help us respond. Your grace is sufficient. And we thank you. Thank you for giving your son, Jesus Christ, who gave nothing except his life. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite everyone to this supper. This is the Lord's table. If you want some of God's grace, prevenient grace is always available as we respond to God speaking to us, being moved. God's justifying grace when we respond and say, God, I give you my life. Transform me. And God's justifying grace when we continue to say, God, mold me, make me like Christ. If you're in need of that grace today to just give you more power, more love, more strength, will you please stand with us today as we join together and eat and be in fellowship with Jesus Christ? Let us pray together this prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us take 30 seconds and pray silently and think about the gifts we've been given by Christ that hung on the cross and was resurrected for each and every one of us. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name, the name of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you, you are, are forgiven. forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. 
Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God. Then in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me and when the supper was over he took the cup gave thanks to you gave it to his disciples and said drink of this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me and so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ, Christ has died. died Christ is risen Christ will come again Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be the wor for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray again the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I'm going to ask if our service will come forth, please. We'll be administering the sacraments by intention today. And that means that as you receive the body of Christ, uh, when you receive it, you can say amen or thank God, whatever you, uh, your response is. And then, of course, the cup will be presented. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Just dip it so slightly into the cup and then eat and know as you're eating. Think about what Jesus Christ has done for you and allow the grace of God to empower your spirit, your soul, and your body. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Please let's pray together the prayer after receiving. Everyone, everyone together. Eternal God. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I pray you feel God's presence. Continue to feel God's presence. Allow Jesus to be with you all week long. Think about everything that has happened here today. If you don't have a church home, I would love to be your pastor. If you need somewhere for that gift to be used, Bear Creek is a great place, great place to use that gift. Please text me, 832-773-4901, or you can come and talk to me today as well. Will you please stand as we sing together this hymn of invitation? Our hymn of invitation today is hymn 399, Take My Life and Let It Be. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Zach. That was perfect. Have you heard God speak today? I want you to meditate and reflect on all that you heard and hear and allow yourself to move as God speaks and say, I want your nothing except. Let's listen to this postlude by Marvel.
Please stand. I ask that you be the light today as you walk out of here. Be the light. Have you thought about what your nothing except is? Are you still thinking about it? As you leave here today, I want you to think about what is your next step. What's your next step? And pray and put that before God this week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look forward to seeing you next week. Invite somebody to come 10 o'clock next Sunday. See you next Sunday. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Have a wonderful week. Thank mm-hmm. you.